Yep. Uh, first on 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 Livehar, um, last week the company reported seven new client signings in uh, the months of July and August. Uh, that's the best result in in two years, and it represents um, the benefits of the new sales approach under the new CEO Christy Forrest. Um, instead of chasing uh, elephants, uh, again, they're focusing on the right clients. They're focusing on those that are ready to transact and they're focusing on those prepared to pay a full price uh, rather than tyre kickers and, and people who wanted to, to um, argue about whether the product was, uh, was valuable to them or not. Um, so um, the new clients that they've signed up <clears throat> in the new year are paying on average 40% more than the existing clients. So round numbers, they're paying around about 35, 36 grand a year uh, compared to 25 grand a year for the former clients. So that's a good sign. Um, the, um, most of those clients were direct clients. Uh, the RPO pipeline has yet to deliver, um, uh, but the company... Uh, says they're very confident that we'll deliver a number of key signings over the next couple of quarters. So um, based on those uh, numbers and given that Christy Forrest hasn't been there very long and she hasn't got a full, um, hasn't got her full um, sales and marketing team uh, uh, um, in the saddle, uh, the company does look like has turned the corner and we'll start to see some more promising uh, reports from them. So um, on that basis, we're maintaining our buy uh, and our 92 cents a share um, our price target. It is, of course, high risk. It is um, a company that's not going to be cash flow positive for a few years, so uh, only for um, investors who are uh, comfortable uh, with that sort of risk level. Uh, moving on to REA, uh, yesterday they, it was announced that they bought uh, OpCity, uh, well, sorry, their US affiliate Move, in which they own 20%, bought OpCity for $210 US million. This is a lead generation business. It buys raw inquiries about properties from Google, Facebook, um, all the other major um, property portals. It runs those um, inquiries through a screening process uh, uh, and uh, out of that screening process maybe uh, 1 or 2% of those get through and then, and then they send that qualified lead to a, a real estate agent who's a subscriber to their service. Um, it's an unusual business model. There are lots of lead generators in the, in the United States, uh, but most of them charge a fixed price for the leads. Um, OpCity is different in that it collects uh, up to 35% of the agent's commission on the property sale if it does lead to a transaction. Um, the US market's very different from Australia. There are very few exclusive property listings. Uh, they're very high commission rates, and most agents are essentially self-employed while they may trade under the banner of a larger broker group. Uh, so really, uh, there's intense competition between agents um, to sell a property, and you could have you know five or six or even ten agents trying to sell the same property, uh, which is very different from our situation here. Um, this is uh, only a three-year-old business, but it has gone from a zero customers to 5,000 paying customers in less than three years. So that's a very encouraging sign. The key for this business is the conversion rates. If below 3% of the leads they send to agents uh, uh, convert into a transaction, uh, it's difficult to grow uh, the business and make money. Above 5%, uh, it will be an absolute cash machine. Uh, so it's a, you know, it's a very fine balance there and a lot will depend on how good they are at getting the technology right. Um, so um, uh, there were no financials provided on that transaction, so it's very hard to incorporate into the model. Uh, so really um, uh, we're, we're maintaining our, our ad recommendation there with a price target of $95.21, uh, which is down $0.20, cents, just a couple of small changes to our forecast there. Um, why we uh, have an ad when there's a less than 10% um, TSR uh, based on our price target. Um, the main reason is that we're still valuing the US at book value, that is the cost they acquired the American businesses at. Um, so it's very, very difficult to get a handle on, on what's happening there. But in a success case scenario where uh, Move and OpCity uh, worked very well, the uh, the valuation for the US business would be many multiples of the book values. So that's why we're maintaining the ad recommendation there. And um, uh, just moving along to Iris, uh, and I apologise for not having raised this uh, earlier, but we initiated right in the middle of reporting season uh, just when you needed more long reports to read. Um, uh, we initiated this uh, on coverage on this stock with a share price target of 40 and 52 and a whole recommendation. 
uh, if we did initiate if we'd initiated uh, two weeks earlier when the share price was about 11% uh, lower, uh, we would have had a buy on it. But unfortunately, uh, the market liked the result a lot and drove the, the share price up. Uh, this is a global business um, in Australia, the UK, Canada, South Africa, and, and a small but growing business in, in Asia. Uh, it's a niche player. Uh, they're a fraction of the size of much bigger uh, uh, players, such as Bloom, Bloomberg and Reuters and, 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 and all sorts of other <coughs> providers. Um, but they have maintained a very high investment in technology and product. So they're still managing to uh, eke out a sort of a circa 20% uh, return on equity, uh, which sort of attracts us to the business. The big growth engine for this company is a financial planning software package called X-Plan. Uh, it's delivering 70 to 80% of global top-line growth. It's a very popular product, and um, I know uh, users for users it's uh, quite controversial. They can't imagine why this product... Uh, is so popular, uh, but it, it's it's better than anything else in the market. Uh, another reason why the market got excited about the result was they announced plans to ver to release uh, um, a light version of X Plan X Plan Light, um, which uh, would significantly lower the price bracket and and also the functionality, but uh, could have uh, uh, far-reaching global implications. They could enter a lot more markets with that product. Uh, for this company, 80 to 90 per cent of their revenue is licensed income. Uh, so even though we, in our minds it is a financial markets uh, uh, company uh, and would have all the, vo the earnings volatility that comes from uh, financial markets, that's actually not the case. Um, uh, the only time their clients uh, stop paying them revenues is when they go broke. Um, the, um, this company, because of its size, it's quite small in the global scale, it's a consolidation player of some sort. Either it's going to acquire um, other small players or it's going to be a target for one of the other big people. It, it can't um, say where it is um, and there has been plenty of consolidation activity uh, in this uh, market data and, and, and financial software space. Um, in recent times, a, a company very similar to Iris uh, was acquired uh, about six months ago for about $2.5 billion US. Um, I believe this business has still got lots of room to grow. Um, uh, it, it is, you know, getting towards fully priced, but um, it does. It is a stock that is volatile. It can get knocked down, um, particularly when the markets are um, experience a rough patch. So I, I'd say um, it's only a hold at the moment, but certainly worth uh, looking at to buy on weakness 